Hello friends, let me first welcome you all to our lecture series on the subject internal combustion engines and gas turbines. And in this series, today we are going to discuss about the working of a simple carburetor. Initially, we will be discussing about the basic conditions which necessitates the use of a carburetor in an SI engine. Then we will be discussing about the constructional details of a simple carburetor and finally the working of a simple carburetor. So let us start with our discussion. So uh, we will be starting with our discussion with a need of a carburetor. So first we should understand what is the need of a carburetor in SI engine. We know that an SI engine is that engine in which a spark is used to ignite the mixture for the combustion. While in CI engines, the compression, the charge is compressed and this particular uh, compression is, uh, becomes the mean for combustion of the charge. So uh, this clearly differentiates between the uh, CI engine and SI engines. So in SI engines, initially a spark is produced and mixture is ignited. So for that, let us understand what a combustion process is. So this is what a combustion is. So a hydrocarbon fuel, that is it has hydrogen and carbon and it is mixed with air. And this process of oxidation is what we call as the combustion and it pro produces carbon dioxide and water along with this it liberates heat and this is uh, where uh, the fuel energy that is the chemical energy in the fuel is being converted into heat energy and this particular process is what we call as combustion so the hydrocarbon fuel combines with oxygen in the air and producing carbon dioxide and water along with heat now uh, in other words the C will combine with oxygen that is uh, carbon will combine with oxygen to form carbon dioxide hydrogen in the fuel will combine with oxygen to form water and that means uh, the there should be a proper mixture produced bet uh, of prepared of this particular fuel and air for the combustion so that the combustion is proper and that is where the mixture requirement is coming into picture that is a proper mixture has to be there to ensure that proper combustion is going to happen so uh, now here we say a homogeneous mixture is required in a SI engine. Now let us uh, start understand why homogeneous mixture is required in a SI engine. We as the name indicates we have what we call as a spark ignition engine that is a spark is used to ignite the mixture. So the uh, initially uh, at the electrodes of the spark plug the fuel is ignited locally. And this particular small flame, nucleus of the flame, is then traveling in the combustion chamber, consuming all the mixture. In other words, uh, flame starts at the spark plug and then it moves across the combustion chamber, consuming all the mixture. And in order to ensure that this flame is moving across the combustion chamber, we require the continuity, continuity of the fuel molecules in the combustion chamber. In other words, we say a homogeneous mixture is required. A homogeneous mixture of air and fuel is required if we are using a spark plug in an engine. So that is where the mixture, uh, the homogeneity of the mixture becomes important. Now, okay, this mixture is being produced, but what is the difficulty in that? We have a fuel, we have air, mix it. But uh, the difficulty arises is that the air is in the gaseous form and the fuel is in the liquid form. So it is difficult then to mix a gas and a liquid. So uh, we have to come up with a solution for this and that is where our carburetor is coming into picture. So uh, here we have to what we do in a carburetor is convert the liquid initially into a vapor and then mix this particular fuel vapor in the air to prepare the mixture. And in order to do this particular function of a uh, uh, function of the preparing the air fuel mixture, uh, therefore, um, a device here will be required, uh, which has a provision of doing 
or bringing a metered quantity of air. So uh, when we talk of a mixture, we are talking of a quantity of a mixture and a quality of a mixture. So first we have to uh, bring a proper quantity of the mixture in. So we have to meter the air quantity coming in. Then uh, we are also talking of bringing in the metered quantity of fuel because we want to ensure the quantity and quality of the mixture. But uh, just bringing in will not be able to mix it. Then what we have to do is we have to atomize the fuel into small droplets and these droplets are then vaporized, converted into vapor and this particular vapor, uh, fuel vapor is then mixed with air to prepare a mixture. So, uh, once we prepare the mixture, then it has to be ensured that proper quantity of this particular air fuel mixture is being supplied to the engine cylinder as per the different requirements of the engine. Because we know that when the engine works for dif under different conditions, it will be requiring different amount of mixture. So as per the requirement of the engine, uh, your device should be able to supply different quantity of the mixture. So uh, th that is where you are, uh, the carburetor device uh, of which we call as a carburetor comes into picture. So uh, this whichever, whichever device which does this all these particular functions that is metering the air and fuel, vaporing the fuel, uh, sorry atomizing the fuel and uh, then converting the fuel into vapor and mixing this particular uh, fuel vapor into air to prepare the mixture and supply this uh, mixture in the required quantity to the engine cylinder. So that uh, device which makes all these things possible is what we call as a carburetor. So let us uh, see the constructional details of a carburetor. So this is your carburetor initially it looks like this. So we have here uh, what we call as a barrel. So initially it is a cylindrical pipe. So this particular cylindrical pipe is what we're calling as a barrel. So this barrel is uh, connected on one side to the engine cylinder and on the other side to the uh, incoming air which is filtered. That is uh, after filtering the air it is being supplied to the barrel. So uh, then we have a main jet which is supplying the fuel uh, into the barrel for air fuel uh, mixture preparation. Then we have a venture inside this. So venture is uh, coming into the function in order to bring in the fuel. We will be discussing it later. Then we have what we call as a throttle wall. So this particular throttle wall which is connected to the accelerator is going to control the quantity of the mixture being supplied to the engine. Then we have a choke. This is going to help us during the cold starting uh, problem. And then we have a float chamber here which does the function of uh, uh, storing the fuel. Uh, in a re required quantity in order to ensure the proper working of a carburetor and a float in this. The, so float helps in maintaining the level of the fuel inside the uh, float chamber. So that is about the constructional details. Now let us move on to the actual working of a carburetor. So as we have discussed uh, in, in now, uh, we require initially a provision for bringing in the metered quantity of air. So uh, there should be provision for sucking the air. So what for that what we have done? So here we have provided a barrel and this particular barrel uh, it is connected to one side to the engine cylinder. So uh, on the engine side engine side we have here vacuum acting over here and here this particular side is then connected to atmosphere. So filtered air um, through the air filter is coming to the engine. So on this side we can say it is uh, atmospheric pressure and here uh, we have a vacuum. So obviously we have a pressure difference over here and due to this particular pressure difference air is made to flow through this particular barrel. So this is the provision what we have uh, for bringing in the air that is a barrel is connected with uh, one side connected to the engine vacuum and the other side to the atmospheric pressure and this particular uh, pressure difference makes the air to flow through this particular barrel. So this is the provision for sucking the air. Next we want uh, some provision for bringing in the fuel. So let us see what this is the provision uh, for bringing in the fuel. For that what we have done, we have a jet over here. So the nozzle jet is here, uh, which is opening in the throat of this particular venturi. So we have a provided a venturi over here and this particular jet is connected to uh, pipeline, which is uh, going to what we call as a float chamber. So this is a float chamber, uh, inside it we have a float. So, uh, how this particular arrangement is helping into uh, bring the 
uh, fuel in so that is uh, so for that what is being done is so we know that we are just now discussed the air is flowing in this now uh, we want to ensure that uh, what we want for bringing in the fuel again we want some pressure difference so for that what we have done is we have provided a venturi over here so this particular venturi when put over here and air is flowing through this particular barrel now whatever air comes in that has to go out from here so that means the mass flow rate is going to remain here and here same so if we want to maintain the mass flow rate flowing through the uh, of air flowing through the barrel constant then as it flows uh, everywhere it has to remain constant but here we have provided venturi and what is this venturi venturi is here we have what we call as a, a convergent section and a divergent section in the convergent section what happens the cross sectional area goes on decreasing and what happens in the divergent section the cross sectional area again goes on increasing so uh, in between we have what we call as a uh, throat of the venturi so from uh, the start to the throat the cross sectional area is decreasing and from the throat to the end here the cross sectional area is increasing now when the cross sectional area is increasing that means area available for the flow of the air is decreasing but we want to ensure that same amount of air is going to flow that means uh, as the amount of area goes on decreasing the flow velocity has to increase that means uh, as uh, the air enters into this particular convergent section of the venturi the air has to increase its flow velocity and as it goes from throat to uh, the end then it will again decrease its velocity and then it will become equal to the velocity over here so that means uh, as the air goes into the venturi uh, the conversion section of the venturi then the velocity has to increase now this is a point to be taken into consideration noted over here that is uh, where the energy comes uh, from uh, for uh, 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 increasing the velocity of the air so we are not supplying any uh, energy from outside so somehow the energy has to be there so uh, energy is being converted from one form to another so what is done is uh, the pressure energy of uh, uh, here is being converted into kinetic energy and this particular kinetic energy is utilized for increasing the velocity of the air and as it flows back uh, in this particular divergent region again this particular kinetic energy will be converted into pressure energy uh, so that is how the things are happening inside a venturi so what to be noted over here is as we go in through this particular air is flowing through this particular conversation the kinetic energy is increasing that is velocity of the air is increasing but the pressure is decreasing and the pressure will be minimum at the throat of the venturi and we are allowing the jet or jet to be opened in the throat of the venturi so this is the region where we have the minimum pressure so a minimum pressure acting over here and you can see this is connected to float chamber and in the float chamber we have the fuel now and the float chamber is vented to atmosphere that means uh, on the upper side of the fuel in the float chamber the atmospheric pressure is acting but on the contrary here we have a vacuum uh, corresponding to the, uh, the pr pressure energy converted into kinetic energy so the pressure decreased pressure over here higher pressure over here and due to this particular pressure difference the fuel is made to flow out through the jet into the barrel in the form of a jet so uh, as it uh, comes out in the form of a jet what happens uh, there is fuel is coming in uh, in the form of a droplets so this is the arrangement made for sucking in the fuel now uh, further we say uh, the fuel is in the form of a droplets coming in now why we are putting it in the form of droplets because we want to increase the surface contact area of the fuel and there because we want to evaporate this particular fuel convert the fuel from liquid to vapor so uh, for that we need to increase the surface contact area of the fuel and the vapor so as the fuel is sprayed in the form of a droplets the droplets are suspended in the air they absorb heat from the air and they get converted from liquid to vapor so droplets absorb the heat and then they get converted into vapor so this is how the fuel is being converted into vapor and once it is converted into vapor then the fuel vapor gets mixed properly with the air as it flows through the barrel
and into the combustion chamber across the throttle. Now, uh, here we now understood how the mixture is being prepared and further uh, we are uh, talking of uh, uh, the supplying the required amount of mixture to the combustion chamber. That is where the role of the uh, throttle walls comes into picture. So, we need to supply the proper amount of mixture to the combustion chamber and for that what we have? We have a throttle connected to accelerator. So, this is a throttle wall and this throttle wall can be opened and closed. So, the opening and closing as we open it more and more amount of fuel mixture will be uh, flowing across the throttle wall and if you are closing it uh, less amount. So, the, uh, in order to control the quantity of the mixture flowing what we have is throttle wall and the throttle wall is connected to the accelerator. So, in uh, actual what we do when we press the accelerator actually uh, we are going to open this particular throttle as we accelerate uh, press the accelerator more and more. Okay, so uh, that is how uh, when we accelerate, we supply more uh, quantity of the mixture to the engine cylinder so that more energy can be produced. Uh, now, here that is where we say as per the requirement of the engine conditions, we are changing the quantity of the mixture flowing into the combustion chamber and we say SI engines are quantity governed. So, uh, this is basically how a carburetor works. So, here we have an arrangement for making the air to flow in and going into the combustion chamber. So, for that we have what we have done is one end is open to atmosphere, other end is open to uh, connected to the engine. So, vacuum is acting over here, atmospheric pressure is acting over here <coughs> and due to the pressure difference air is flowing in. Now, for the fuel we have here vacuum created with the help of venturi. Here the pressure is atmospheric. So, the pressure difference make the fuel come in. Now, as the fuel comes out, it comes out in the form of droplets. When the droplets are there, the uh, droplets are able to absorb the heat, required latent heat from the air and they are getting converted into vapor and the vapor is then mixing with the uh, uh, air to prepare the mixture and uh, to supply the required amount of mixture to the engine, we have the throttle over here and as the throttle is opened or closed, we are able to change the quantity of uh, mixture flowing into the combustion chamber and then we say the SI engine is quantity governed. So that is how a SI engine works. Thank you.